Welcome back to Her Rules Radio. I'm Alex Jameson, your hostess, your life, health, and success mentor. I work with an incredible array of creative, driven, entrepreneurial women from all over the world who are facing some of the same fears and challenges on the path to creating the businesses and the art and the work and the life that they dream about. One of them, today's topic, is actually inspired by my incredible kid who will be 13 years old in a matter of days. Um, He is currently applying along with 90,000 other New York City kids to high school. And because he is an artist and an entrepreneur already, he has created things and sold them um, at his own little booth, um, making money from his art, which is so super cool to witness. But he has faced some of the same demons and fears and challenges of mindset that I witness in my incredible driven clients who are adults all the time. So here's the scene. I'm in the kitchen at the table. My kid is standing before me, shoulders slumped, pencil and sketch pad ready on the table. And he says to me, I just don't feel inspired today, mom. And I looked at him, I said, don't worry, kid. You don't have to feel inspired right now. All an artist needs to do is sit down and start moving the pencil. So inspiration has somewhere to show up. There's this myth about inspiration. I see it in my clients all the time. Coaches, podcasters, consultants, writers, healers. I see it in myself, which is how I can spot it so quickly in other people. This false myth needs to be scrubbed from our belief systems. It's the myth that we need to wait for a great idea to land fully formed in our brains, and only then can we sit down and create something good. So I'm about to show you how to scrub that myth from our minds, why it's important to do so, and how it will benefit both your life satisfaction and your success. So I hear this myth expressed from my clients who are coaches, branding and marketing experts, doctors, healers, psychologists, bloggers, people who are growing their Instagram or Facebook following, people who are starting or finishing a book, people who want to launch a podcast, but haven't yet. The myth that we have to wait for inspiration to strike keeps us from sitting down and fumbling through the discomfort of trying to clarify our thoughts and our voice. This myth that we have to wait for inspiration stops us from getting our butts in the chair to do the work, which is where inspiration happens. This myth that we have to wait for inspiration keeps us from getting better at our work, at our art, through practice. And believe me, I've been writing professionally for almost two decades. When did my first book come out? 2004? 2005? Ooh, it's been a minute. Anyway, I still sometimes, every once in a while, hear this myth in me. But I know the truth is all I have to do is keep at my writing practice and the work will happen through me. Because the truth is great writers and creators, successful coaches, and outstanding entrepreneurs don't wait for inspiration to strike. They get down to the work, knowing that inspiration comes when we have our tools, we get into our space, we welcome the muse, and we embody the creatrix, right? That creative source inside each of us. I talk about the creatrix often on this show, on my blog, on my Instagram, everywhere. The creatrix is an old, old world that is kind of an avatar in us. It's like an aspect of divine creativity. She who creates, authoress, she who founds, right? It's like the feminine version of creator with a little bit of goddess magic sprinkled on top. This myth of inspiration needs to be rewritten in all of us. If I waited to feel inspired, I might never go to my 7 a.m. Pilates class. 
If I waited to feel inspired, I might never cook a fresh midweek dinner or speak in front of a room of potential clients. I still get hella nervous public speaking. If I waited to feel inspired, I might never finish a book. My fifth book is coming out soon, by the way. But man, that process of writing can sometimes be hard. (laughs) It's like putting on your hiking boots. You're not out hiking yet, but you're ready to start. Once you got those boots on, right? Next step is just going out the door. What's important and what every creator you admire knows is that it's the tiny personal habits that lead to professional success and deep life satisfaction. Growing these habits of creativity can greatly improve anyone's life, especially your business and career. Even if you are working for someone else or you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur or you're running a side hustle while you're working for someone else, creative habits, creative thinking, some of the most important skills that help us stay relevant help us stand out, help us become valuable to our clients or our employers. And right, the practice of ramping up your creativity and practicing it is not just for artists, not just for artists. Creativity is for everyone. But waiting for inspiration to strike, that's a rookie belief. Now, studies on creativity, inventors and entrepreneurs, show that those who produce the masterworks also tend to produce the most work, including a whole lot of failures. Some people, some quotes from who you might know. I totally said that backwards. That's okay. (laughs) Some quotes from people you might know. Thomas Edison said this about his long road to inventing the light bulb. I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 that didn't work. Maya Angelou, nothing will work unless you do. Janice Bryant Howroyd, incredible entrepreneur, said, discipline is not a dirty word. There is far more freedom and opportunity for creativity and success in enjoying discipline. Years ago, someone I very much respect told me the reason they were successful is that they embraced doing what other people resent or are reluctant to do. Now, here's one of my personal quotes on this topic from Chuck Jones. He is the illustrator, the cartoonist, the animator who created Bugs Bunny and Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner and Porky Pig. Chuck Jones said, every artist has thousands of bad drawings in them, and the only way to get rid of them is to draw them out. Now, don't get me wrong. The truth about inspiration is not the same as not listening to your intuition. You might be thinking, Alex, how is this different from trusting my intuition when it tells me to wait? Okay, very good question. Sometimes, quote unquote, listening to our intuition is masking resistance to doing the work. So here's a question for you to ask yourself. So tune in, get quiet and ask yourself, is this my intuition telling me to stop and rest and wait? Or am I resisting showing up to the daily work of experimentation and practice? Only you can answer this question. Doing the work consistently, even when it isn't quote unquote good or masterful yet, doing that work consistently is what helps us show up and trust and hone our intuition. See the difference? As you show up to the page or the desk or the microphone or the meetings, keep listening to your intuition and let it guide you. It will lead you to inspiration and great ideas. So showing up to your work consistently is really about trusting yourself, the value of your ideas, and believing in your divine connection to your inner creatrix. So here are a few ways you can realign your internal motivation and show up for your passions. We have to make time and take space. Be present. 
Look at the world around you. Read books, look at art, listen to music, walk in nature, make art, get out of your device, you know, your phone, your computer. Our job as creatives is to observe, play with reality, take in the world and imagine a new one. We are the creators of the new world and new solutions. By being present to your ideas and inspirations and doing the work to get them out onto the page or through the microphone, that's how it all works. I hope this is helpful. The priceless value of committing to your creativity and not waiting for inspiration to strike is that you'll create new, exciting combinations of things. Your work and your skills get better. You'll surprise yourself and rekindle your passion for the work and your resilience will grow and you'll get into productive flow more often. So a few follow-up questions for you to reflect on. And I highly recommend you come on over to Facebook to the Her Rules Radio Crew, a special free group in Facebook, where we've got close to 2000 people, listeners who show up there, share their thoughts and reflections on these shows and offer their stories. Some questions about this. Do you tend to wait for inspiration to strike before you show up to the work that you know is important? Do you tend to work in the same way all the time? Is there a way you could shake it up? Have you given yourself space in your life, in your home, or somewhere, some a physical space, so you can consistently show up for your passions? Is there a corner of your house, a place in the basement, a spot in the attic, or an out, outside of your home space, like a small studio, where you can put your tools and show up to work there and take time to consistently show up for your passions. Have you done that? Listen, this path of creativity, entrepreneurship, or just, you know, feeling that drive in you to put your voice and your ideas into the world. It's an innately human drive. It's in almost all of us, I'm going to say 99% of us, to connect with our truth and wisdom and to put it out into the world in a way that helps us grow personally and is somehow of service to others, to something bigger than ourselves. It's really a divine and very, very human story. And in late December, I will be opening applications for the very special Creatrix 2020 Mentorship Program. I'm going to be open, opening up applications in December. It's a small group. It will be up to 10 women. And we will spend the year 2020 together as a group on a retreat here in New York City with some of the most incredible artistic and creative experiences and people that you can even imagine. It also includes one-on-one -on -one coaching with me so that you can, by the end of 2020, be miles beyond where you are now in putting out your creative vision and your voice out into the world in a way that is personally satisfying and professionally growing you. All right? So go on over to Instagram. Follow me on Instagram at Delicious Alex. And there's a link in my bio profile there to sign up for the early bird list to get first crack at the Creatrix 2020 applications when they go up in December. I hope that you if you're feeling that little tug like yes, I want to be amongst a group of supportive, driven, inspiring women and I want to work with Alex in 2020. Just go put your name on the list. There is no pressure, does not mean anything. But if you feel it, take the step, put your name down. I want to send this to you. Have a beautiful week. Ask those questions of yourself. Show up for yourself, show up to the work. And we'll be back here next week 
with more incredible topics. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Mwah!